Let's dive in a little deeper looking at relations, and one way we can do that is by looking at the white gap element. So I'm going to add an element of the white gap type, and I'll just leave it there called white gap. And what I want to find is the white gap between credit note number and date. And maybe I want to use that to restrict the upper boundary of a search area for date, customer number, and sales tax value. So um, I'll start off with this white gap. Um, that is not a really big area. I can measure it. And that white gap is approximately uh, maybe 30 dots or greater. So I want to look for a white gap with a minimum height of 30 dots. And under relations, I want it to be above, let's say, sales tax. So I'll add the element sales tax as a reference. And I'll say above the top. And we can see our search area right there. I'll go ahead and add this relation and we'll test it. And my white gap isn't really doing what I want it to do. So let's add more relations. I want it to be above sales tax, also to the right of the left boundary. and to the left of the right boundary. So we're just going to box that in. I can highlight this and we can see our search area. So uh, maybe to get better results with a white gap, I can uh, specify a smaller search area. So I'll test this. Match. And our white gap is found right here. But what we wanted to find it right here. And so, sure enough, um, that's the right dimension. In other words, certainly 30 dots fits in this area. But let's make one more change here. And once again, on the Relations tab, let's say nearest to the element sales tax. Let's try that nearest to sales tax. I'll match once again. And now we can see that our white gap is being found precisely where we want it to be found. So this could serve as an upper boundary for a different search area. White gaps are also helpful sometimes for finding where tables end to use as table footers. Let's finish up our review of relations by looking at a simple address parsing layout. So here we have a document with an address. And we've got um, an algorithm to find the zip code then relative to the zip code, find the state, zip, city, and address. And we rely on relations to find this data. And again, this is just a rough prototype, um, kind of for learning purposes only. But um, uh, it may be useful, and it could be um, a, at least a starting point. Uh, if you need to break up an address, um, you could use an approach like I'm about to show you, and then maybe add some code to, to help solidify it. Because we know addresses come in a lot of shapes and sizes. Um, so let's go ahead and see that we're starting off by finding uh, something I call a zip locator. And I'm simply either looking for a number that's five characters followed by a dash followed by four characters, or there's a pipe symbol, an alpha character uppercase followed by five numbers. And with regular expressions in Flexi Layout Studio, we're not searching for the spaces we don't need to. So it, that's what it found. It matched WA98532. So really nothing else going on here, no relations. Uh, so we can then um, look at the state. And we match the state 
Let's look at the um, logic there. We're looking for all these different states, followed by, um, uh, I'm sorry, separated by pipe symbols. And we're using relations. We want to look to the left of the zip locator, uh, below and above the zip locator top and bottom. So we can see the gray search area for the zip locator. It's to the left of the right boundary of zip locator. If you recall, that was two alpha characters followed by five numbers. So looking to the left, and we have some below and above relations forming this gray search area. We're saying nearest to the element zip locator. And once again, we're looking for, to match one of these text strings. Then once we have that found, we can look for the zip code. And the zip code logic is look to the right of the right boundary of state, and then have some other boundaries um, to kind of box in that zip code area. So pretty straightforward there. Then the city is actually, again, relying on relations, looking just to the left of the state and then some offsets below and above to make this search area. So some cities have um, more than one string. So San Francisco is two, uh, there are two strings followed, you know, separated by a space. So we can take into account those kinds of cities. And then we can go ahead and um, find um, the first line of an address right here. Um, that address is looking simply above city top and with some offsets that could be adjusted as needed. And you know other permutations of this I've then um, expanded on this and the next step that I've done is created a paragraph, finding a paragraph that's between say four and eight lines long nearest to the zip locator, it's going to draw a box directly around this and I could find my address or my customer name by looking nearest to the top of that paragraph element. So I know that I'll always find the topmost line. So we know there's all sorts of variations in addresses. So really I just want to use this as a learning example and you can see how powerful relations uh, mastering relations can be for you.